If you have a CO2 laser and you want to mark on metal with it, there's a lot of products out there that you can choose from. I'm going to help you figure out which one is best for you. Hey everyone, it's Paul Meir with Toolmetrics and I've been doing some testing on my Laguna CO2 40 watt laser, their model PL1220, to try to determine which products are going to be best for it marking onto metal. Now lasers like this don't have the power to actually manipulate the metal and engrave into it, so what you do is use one of these products, spray a layer on top of the metal, set it into the la let it dry, put it in the laser, run your job on it, and then take it over to the sink, wash it off, and the image is revealed. So, what I did to test this is I uh, grabbed some sample pieces of metal, unfinished, can't have any film, uh, any lacquer, anything, any coating on top of these metals. I used stainless steel, copper, aluminum, and brass. And I used the, the following products to, uh, to run these tests on here. First, CRC Molly Lube. You may have seen a video that I did recently uh, comparing a bunch of different lubricant products uh, and, and their ability to etch onto metal. CRC uh, Dry Molly Lube was the, uh, the best of the bunch in that, and so I'm doing a comparison of that to the purpose-built product. So this is a lubricant product. It's not really designed for marking uh, under a laser engraver, but it just sort of works to some extent. Uh, these other products are purpose-built and marketed as such. The first one in the uh, lineup is Surmark, their 6000 series product. This is the original product in the industry for a laser etching onto metal. Uh, so this was a no-brainer to include that. And there was another product out there called Thermark. Now when I ordered it, it was called Thermark, and when it arrived, it was called Surmark their 14 series. <clears throat> this is the same product as Thermark. Surmark acquired uh, Thermark and now it's marketed as their uh, LMM 14 product. Um, and so those were the two that I was planning to compare to Dry Molly. And then someone said, well, there's a new product out there, uh, Laser Bond 100. And this was de developed by Paul Harrison, the same guy that developed the formula for the original Surmark product. So he now has his own company, Laser Bond. Um, same purpose, and so I added that to the test. Was ready to run the test, and someone else said, hey, there's another product out there that you should look at called Enduramark. So Enduramark uh, sent some samples. Uh, this is black. They also sent some different colored samples that I'll try in a, and maybe do a separate video on those. Um, this is a little bit different in that it doesn't come in an aerosol can. Um, it comes in a, in a uh, bottle like this and you add denatured alcohol to it and then you run it through a spray system. Now they provided uh, for me one of these Prevail sprayers. And these are neat. I've seen these used in finishing wood uh, and so basically this just screws onto the top of this bottle and acts as a sprayer. You can also use this in a probably a higher quality spray gun which would probably give you a little bit smoother application but this seemed to get the job done anyway uh, for the purposes of my tests. So what I did, run, I ran all those tests varying the laser intensity and laser speed and you'll see sort of what the optimal marking for each of these products are on each of the metals uh, and then I, I'm going to do some comparisons as well to other factors like how well did they lay down the spray, um, how easy to clean up, how durable were they before laser engraving and after, um, what was the cost per square inch, big range of, and cost on these products so we're going to take a look at that and then ultimately how fast are you able to operate the laser because time is money if you're running a, a professional shop the ability to run the laser at higher speeds is going to be beneficial. Uh, if you're a hobbyist, maybe that's not as critical to you. So those are that kind of sets up the test. I'm going to go sh through and share a lot of data with you, so stick with it. And uh, it's, there's no easy answer, so it's really all about looking at the data and determining which product is probably the best in your environment. So let me next take a look at each of the metals and, and talk about the results. Okay, on stainless steel, all of the products marked reasonably well. Um, the variability was in how dark the marking was. The standouts there were Surmark 6000 and LBT 100. Uh, Surmark uh, 14 and Enduramark uh, marked crisp and clean a little bit lighter uh, than the other two products. Dry Molly marked okay in a very slow speed range. That's another uh, big variability here was the speed at which the laser could operate uh, with the winners there being uh, LBT being uh, number one and, and Surmark, uh, both the Surmark products uh, did reasonably well in that category uh, also. Okay, now taking a look at copper, we have clear standouts here with the Surmark 14 product and LBT. Uh, the Surmark product did 
very well at one reading or two, and that was in that 150 to 175 millimeters per second range at 98% intensity. LBT did very well across that full spectrum of performance, and so I would say LBT was a standout on copper. Okay, now looking at aluminum, uh, again, Molly Lube was a no-show. Um, the other products performed decently. Uh, Surmark 6000 didn't do great uh, there. It looks like it could hold up at a very slow laser speed and put down a decent mark. Um, the LBT f uh, product did extremely well across that full spectrum again, as did the Surmark 14 product. Enduramark did uh, respect respectably well uh, across that full range as well. Not quite as tight of a pattern, a little bit grainier as it sped up, uh, but in that 150 to 175 range, a very respectable mark. And then finally, brass, um, dry molly again. Uh, no marks at all. Enduramark uh, did okay, again, in that 150 to 175 speed range. The other products, uh, the, both Surmark products did quite well, as did LBT. So uh, LBT held up the best as we got into the highest speed range. Uh, I guess Surmark uh, 14 as well did, did well up in that 300 millimeters per second range. Um, the Surmark 6000 product did quite well until you got up into about 250 and definitely at 300 you see it becoming grainy and breaking up a little bit. All right, then some of the other factors that I looked at, um, spray quality. So this was just a measure of how well each of the products laid down when I sprayed them. Dry Molly Lube was pretty much a disaster compared to the other products. It does fine, uh, but the other products are just much better at laying down a nice even layer. The two standouts there were both of the Surmark products where they just laid down a, almost like a spray paint quality film. The only reason I would uh, give them a slight mark off was that they laid down what I felt to be a little bit thicker layer than I felt was needed for this application. So I would rather have it lay down a little bit less material, save me a little bit money uh, over the long haul. Uh, and the LBT product did a decent job. Uh, I felt like to get a consistent coverage, I had to put down two coats in a lot of cases uh, compared to the others, but they were thin coats, so I think overall it didn't feel like I was using more material, just had to spend a little bit more time getting even coverage. The Enduramark product, <clears throat> again, I used the, uh, the Prevail sprayer system, which is a very inexpensive way. If you have a spray gun and you want to run that in, I'm guessing you're going to get better results. I found it to be a little bit lumpier than the rest and, and ended up putting down more material uh, than the other products. Uh, another uh, item that I looked at was cleanup. Um, dry molly was a bear to clean up. Now, a little bit of denatured alcohol helps accelerate that, but you're going to do some scrubbing and spend a little time cleaning up. All of the other products did uh, great. Uh, amazed, uh, actually, by how easily they washed off uh, just, with, just with water. I also looked at cost, which is an important factor. The dry molly lube is at about a penny per square inch. This is a very inexpensive product relative to the others. LBT and um, Enduramark came in at about three cents per square inch, um, all in. And the Surmark 6000 product was at about four cents. And the Surmark uh, 14 product, formerly Thermark, is at about seven cents per square inch. So big range. You might be able to find a less expensive way to buy, depending on which product you're using. Uh, some of these come in uh, formulas where you can mix it yourself. So if you want to drive down the cost, there are probably options. Uh, darkness, um, this is the, the marking quality. So to me, I was really looking for that darkness and that contrast. Um, and the ones that stood out there were LBT 100 and the Surmark 6000 product. Uh, all of the other products I put into a B range just because they were, um, they left a nice clean crisp mark at the right speed settings, but not quite as dark as the other products. I measured durability in two ways. First, the um, the durability after you spray it and before you put it under the laser. So to me that's not that important because as long as I'm careful I spray it on, I carry it into the laser and off I go. 
Uh, in some production shops, what they like to do is spray a bunch of blanks, have them stored on a shelf, and pull them down as they have orders come in. So if you want to do that, there were only a couple products uh, that really met the mark for that. Um, Molly lube, this stuff is pretty much indestructible, so you could uh, uh, you could definitely use that in that way. Enduramark did a great job on that as well. Very solid film. Uh, and. Um, and the uh, Surmark 6000 product as well held up fine. And I've heard of commercial shops using this product specifically for that purpose. So um, not a surprise that it tested well here. Durability after the laser, these all left a very, very durable mark. Um, I found really no difference in the durability in my tests. I scrubbed, uh, I tried chemical um, application with uh, denatured alcohol, uh, ammonia, janitorial strength ammonia, uh, and really didn't see any uh, any degradation of the image from those chemicals. When I scrubbed using uh, 600 grit wet dry sandpaper, I wet sanded it, they all would sand off with some elbow grease and they all sanded off about the same. So. As long as you're not sanding or grinding on the uh, etched marks, they're going to hold up pretty well. Uh, the final area that I looked at was the speed of the laser. And you sort of saw that in each of the separate metal test results. Um, but this is really, you know, if you're a production shop, you want to be able to run that laser as fast as you can and still leave a good mark so that you can get your production run done more quickly. So big range on that. Dry molly, not good for that. Uh, you had to run the laser very slow to leave a decent mark. Uh, the other products were all decent. The standout there, uh, the Surmark uh, 14 product did, did quite well there, but the real standout there was the LBT 100 product. All right, that about wraps this one up. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, hopefully it will help you choose a product that makes most sense for your laser engraver and what you're engraving on. Uh, please subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel. Hope you come back for more DIY, woodworking, and laser engraver videos. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful, and I will have all of the products here uh, referenced in the uh, comments section below so you can find or the description below so you can find uh, these products if you found one that is interesting to you. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.